Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Sunday video. Thank you for being here. Uh, I do this each week and basically what these videos are. I go through the markets and I talk about setups and things that I'm watching for going into the week ahead. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, as you know, there is just so much movement going on with the Forex market recently. There's been a lot of volatility. And if you've been on the right side of that, it's been great. If you've been on the not so right side of that, it's been a little bit tough. So hopefully what we can do in this video is talk a little bit about trade setups and things going on in the markets that could could be helpful for you going into this week. We are going to talk about the dollar. We're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about a couple different currency pairs here uh, and some of the upcoming news that could be market impacting for you to keep an eye on going into this week as a trader. Before I do, if you have been meaning to join our Discord, I do want to make sure that people are aware of this. This is the last chance to get 40% off of our Discord community. If you've been watching me on YouTube for a while and you've been meaning to join our community, this is going to be your best chance of the entire year to get 40% off the group. If you would like access, Access, you get access to our trade alerts. So any trades that I take, you can join our chat rooms and meet other traders from around the world. You can join our you know, group to see all the different in-depth research that our team here at A1 Trading is doing. We've got a full staff that does all the work behind what you guys see inside of the Discord. Uh, and then also we do have coaching webinars throughout the week to answer your questions and to work with members. And then we also have strategy and software libraries available. So software libraries, by the way, do include that A1 Trend Scanner that has recently been released for members uh, that who choose to go for the gold membership. So with that said, there will be more information down below in the description if you would like to join us in the Discord. Discord, there's a link and a promo code to get that bestowed upon 40% off, which like I said, it really is the, the biggest discount of the year. So if you'd like to join us, that's your best shot. So I want to make that aware uh, to the people who have been meaning to join us. Okay. So the dollar, let's start with the dollar here going into this week. The dollar sold off pretty strongly last week. Last week was a really bad week for the US dollar. Um, we started out here, uh, you know, you see this beautiful little pin bar, sort of ugly doji looking candle here uh, that all of a sudden just started to roll over as the market uh, sort of came into to play last week. And you can see that we pretty much saw a continuation throughout the week. There's a period of consolidation before ultimately rolling over and continuing those losses uh, right on into Friday with the Fed meeting from Jerome Powell. Now, is the dollar just time to, to collapse? Is it really over here for the dollar or is this just a pullback before the continuation? Well, uh, a big thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is the fact that we do have uh, NFP this upcoming week, which is a big deal. Anytime you have NFP, that has potential to really move the markets. Uh, and I do plan on actively trading this week throughout NFP. Uh, like I said, NFP is basically uh, it is a huge market impacting news figure. If you don't know what it is, it's basically unemployment here in the U.S. So overall, the trend here in the U.S. dollar still seems uh, tentatively intact. You do have the moving averages lining up nicely here on the four hour chart and on the daily chart. You can also see the same thing. You've got this nice little uptrend uh, going on since we've sort of bo bottomed out from the lows of the year. Uh, but going into everything this week, I would just be hesitant with the dollar just because, again, we don't know what those jobs figures are going to be. By the way, that is going to be on Friday. We can head over here to forexfactory.com. And you can see, of course, that September 3rd, Friday, we do have the uh, NFP news, which, like I said, is likely to be highly market moving. Uh, you've got uh, NFP, no new uh, CAD unemployment. Sometimes we see CAD unemployment on the same day each month, but uh, not this month. And then, of course, we do have uh, Aussie GDP. We have the OPEC meeting, which is potentially moving for uh, Canada and oil uh, prices. And then, of course, a little bit of US dollar news as well. But the big one does seem to be that Friday uh, NFP report, which is going to be highly anticipated by many market participants. Okay, so that's the big thing on the dollar. Maybe we do see before NFP, I would watch the lead up too. You may see a bit of optimism come in because uh, I will say this. There has been a lot of rumors for the U.S. dollar uh, to possibly have a bullish week off of this due to the fact that, you know, jobs have been rebounding very strongly here in the U.S. Overall, the economic bounce back has been strong. And so if that is set to continue, uh, it is possible that we could see some very strong jobs numbers here for the U.S. this week. So keep an eye on that. If you are a bull on the dollar, maybe there's that little bit of a, a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. So maybe we'll go look at some of the individual crosses for the U.S. dollar to see if there's any specific trade setups that look interesting. Because we just looked at the DXY, but actually let's go look at some of the uh, currency pairs that we could 
possibly trade in response to this. Okay, so the Euro USD still very bearish overall. You do have a lot of downtrend structure here, though last week we did see a pretty strong pop towards the end of the week. If we see some sort of confirmation or possibility of a rollover, maybe you could look to get short on the Euro dollar. Like I said, we did see that really strong pop towards the end of the week. However, we came into this resistance level right here and basically just stopped for the week. That was pretty much our, our stopping point, if you will. So as we come into this next week, question will be, can we get some form of a rejection? It does look like we're trying here. Maybe on the lower time frames, you could look for something for maybe some trend continuation plays here on the Euro dollar. I do like that personally myself. I do like the idea of Euro dollar shorts somewhere along the way couple other levels that stick out should that level not work out you may see a move back up to 1.19 and of course a big psychological level at 1.2 Okay, couple. there's a couple areas for you to consider if you are bearish on the Euro USD overall. Like I said, the structure here looks pretty bearish overall. Uh, we saw that big sell-off back in June, and now it's just a question of whether or not that's going to continue. Uh, and again, when you get these little counter trends, you have to look at these, in my view, as a counter trend, as a trend trader, right? These, these sort of counter trends as possible movements to look to get short to continue the play. So that is my opinion on the Euro USD. We'll go ahead and uh, watch that one closely this week for sure. Sure. The next one is going to be the pound dollar. Pound dollar, uh, similar story. Lots of bearishness for this one, though doing a bit better than the euro here this week, I would say. Uh, we did see a very strong bounce for the pound off of these lows down here at 1.36. So we did see a lot of buyers come into that area and a little bit of a higher low here for the pound. So if you're watching the pound from a bullish perspective, a um, couple things that I would note is if you think that the pound is headed higher, we saw a little bit of rejection towards the end of the week. Uh, as a bull, if you were a bull, you'd probably want to see this thing break out and do one of these guys, right? You'd like to see that level of what was resistance actually start holding as support uh, and show some strength for the buyers. So we will watch that one for sure. Uh, again, going to be dependent on that US dollar uh, jobs report towards the end of the week. But leading up to the end of the week, there may be some intraday or short-term swing trade opportunities for you if you're watching things like the pound. Um, for me, until this thing breaks or shows signs of breakouts, to me, this thing is mostly bearish uh, just because, again, we've got structure to the downside. It does seem overall like sellers are in control. And until that changes, for me, this is more of a seller's market than anything else. Okay, so that would be my opinion. Maybe you do see a little bit of rejection. Same thing. Thing with the euro if you see signs of breakout to the downside on the lower time frames we may have gotten engulfing candles etc on the one hour chart let's go look at that really quick here's the one hour chart uh not quite engulfing but a little bit of rejection up here at 1.377 let's say somewhere in this range uh and so going to be watching that for sure going into next week uh for the sellers one other thing i will point out is that we do have this little higher low sellers you'd love to see this thing break out underneath right and to show a lower low that would just be a very good thing for sellers uh who are looking to, to see this market roll over um okay next thing is going to be dollar yen dollar yen had a little bit of, uh, of a sell-off there on friday we saw a really strong uh, sell-off for the dollar and the yen quite uh, you know, jumped compared, comparatively speaking. Uh, looking at the four-hour chart, you can kind of see this thing has been a, a very ugly, choppy uptrend right now. Uh, but in the overall context of things, the, the, the dollar yen uh, for me has been very range-bound uh, and is mostly just likely to continue until we get something that is very, very market moving for the pound, uh, sorry, the dollar yen. I don't have too much of a bias on this currency pair at the time. Um, you know, if we see, like I said, when I when I say range bound, what I mean is this market is just back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and until that really starts to show, you know, maybe a break to the upside or a break to the downside, until we see that confirmation, that follow through somewhere, for me, it is mostly just looking to uh, to go you know, or just to wait until one of these events happens and then look at the fundamentals, look at the technicals and try and make a decision from there. So this one is not my favorite of the currency pairs right now. Let's take a look at dollar cad as well. Dollar cad got a really big haircut there towards the end of the week. We saw a little bit of a bounce back, but then all of a sudden, bam, that Friday fed meeting launched uh, dollar cad down to the lows almost of the week. Uh, just shy of that. If you're watching this thing from a bearish perspective, Watch this level here at 1.26. If you get some form of a breakout, that could lead to further selling going into next week, especially if that OPEC meeting has something that is very bullish for uh, the for the oil market. Because again, Canada, we've said this many times on the channel, Canada uh, is very much uh, sort of correlated to the oil market. Their economy is highly you know built around oil. So if the demand for oil is going up, then that is generally good for their economy. 
if the demand for oil is going down, that could be worse. So again, watch that OPEC. You know, if you're if you're really interested in watching for for CAD news, uh, keep an eye on things that could be said during the OPEC meeting, etc. Uh, and again, from a technical analysis perspective, watch that 1.26 level. Seems like a pretty big spot for the bulls and for the bears watching for the breakout. So couple things to look out for going into the week on dollar CAD. Uh, okay, next one is going to be AUD USD. AUD USD was an interesting one for sure. Uh, the A1 trend scanner that I actually I, I put out a video yesterday with this one. Uh, the A1 trend scanner. Let me see if I can pull this up for you guys. AUD USD was actually an interesting print on there. Uh, we had a little bit of an overbought reading. So this is the A1 trend scanner, and you can see just by what the the tool here has printed is uh, it's in a overall bearish trend, right? So it scanned the moving averages here, uh, and then for the signal, you can see that it is poking up into a pretty strong level of resistance and an overbought reading on the RSI. So uh, an interesting little scan there. I think that this uh, this has the potential to be bearish next week if the trend does want to continue. Again, this is a long-term downtrend indicated by the moving averages that we've selected for the A1 trend scanner. So uh, by the way, what I mentioned earlier with this whole... Um, the, the gold membership uh, package, you actually get the A1 trend scanner as you know down below at the bottom there. You can see the strategy and software library. The A1 trend scanner comes with the gold membership option. So if you are interested in getting this tool, if that would be helpful to you, then by all means, uh, you may check out the gold membership option down below uh, and support us with our what we try and do here on the YouTube channel. Basically, the community is a way to fund all of the, you know, my, my staff and, and you know, the video equipment and everything. So uh, if you would like to join us, like I said, there's information down below in the description. Um, yeah, so I do like AUD USD to the downside here. I, I did take a loss here last week, but I think there may be opportunities to look for more downside overall. Uh, again, this this sort of counter trend, uh, watching for some failure could be key as well. If you're more of waiting for a confirmation sort of trader, something like this, you know, a breakout of that structure could be interesting for further downside going into next week. So uh, definitely one on my watch list. NZB USD, however, really, really showed some strength last week. We saw a lot of strength come into the NZD. And of course, with that dollar weakening, it definitely even launched it further. So um you know, this one has seem, seemingly broken out. Uh, it's still overall, like there seems to be some pretty good downward structure, but it's not a market that I am super interested in trading at this moment. So I'm going to stay on the sidelines with that one. Uh, next one is going to be gold. So let's take a look at gold here today and see if we can talk about gold. So gold had a really, really great week. Closing up there at uh, just over 1817, which is a really big move to the upside for gold bulls. Uh, cr uh, crazy, crazy volatility there. Because remember, just a few weeks ago, August 21st, we were down there. Sorry, actually, August like 8th. We were down there all the way at 1677, 16. 80, some crazy number. Now we're up to 1820. So just the volatility of gold showing itself here. Um, one big, big level for gold bulls. Uh, if you are bullish on gold going into this next week, watch this level here at 1830. This level multiple times held resistance, uh, you know, showed that it was not willing to break. We finally saw the major sell-off, but now with this recovery, can we get the steam and the momentum to actually poke above and stay above that 1830 mark for some bigger, longer-term pushes, longer-term momentum could be kicking in at that level. So that to me is a, a huge highlight spot for gold bulls uh, and for gold sellers. If you think that this thing is staying lower, then you probably don't want to see this thing broken out. And again, to me, that is a potential signal that if that breaks out, we could be making a move back to up to the highs uh, there that we made in June. So again, that is not the high of all time, but it is the high of, I believe that's the high of year, right? Is that the high of year? Uh, no. So the high of year was actually January 5th. So just barely the high of the year was uh, up there at 1950. So will we make a move to 1950? A big thing here, like I said, is a breakout starts at 1830. Uh, they say every big trend starts with a breakout. So watch for a potential big break there uh, at 18, sorry, uh, yeah, 1830. Uh, and again, we've already started to see signs of momentum. We've seen gold very, very strong here. So it's just a matter of can we actually get above that big psychological level that we could not break through uh, back in July and uh, August. So watch out for that if you are a gold bull. <clears throat> 
For me, uh, it's very much going to be dependent on my dollar thesis. Right now, I am dollar bullish, even though you know dollar had a had a week, uh, a poor week last uh, week. The idea here with the the dollar for me is that. I do think that the talks of tapering are coming. It may be later than expected, which could be short-term bearish for the dollar. Uh, but I think that once that you know discussion starts being had, you may see gold really take a dive. Uh, I'm not willing to go short on gold either, though, because again, you that timing is quite difficult. Uh, but for me, is watching and be careful about trying to get overly bullish on gold too soon. Now, if we start to see breakouts and we see something from the Fed that is sort of uh, contradictory to my thoughts on the dollar then I am not above the idea of switching sides and looking for opportunities. I am, you know, as a trader, my job is not to be, you know, right all the time. My job is to, you know, try and manage risk and hopefully make some money, right? So the whole idea is if you see signs from the Fed that could be very dollar bearish, uh, then maybe gold has more of a more wind in its sail than I'm thinking, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, so that is pretty much everything I have for you guys today. Like I said, it's the last chance to get that 40% off sale. There is a code down below in the description. You punch that code in, you get 40% off the gold membership, and you get access to everything that we talked about in this video, the, the membership, uh, the software tools that we have, uh, et cetera, and join our webinars, things like that. So hope to see some of you guys in there. I hope you have a great week this week. Trade safe and we will see you back.